Hello, my name is Martin and thank you for joining me in this video on how to use a Clemson eTor to Ethernet enable a uh, serial PLC much like the Panasonic FPLR. So looking at the models for the Panasonic PLC, we have an FPLR C14 CRS for RS232 or an FPLR C14 MRS for RS45. The eTor on the other hand has again two models eTor-2 for RS-232 or eTor-4 for RS-45 and uh, I've written down there the RXTX and ground three wires for RS-232 and uh, channel A and B and ground for RS-45 either way you've got three cables going from um, the eTor to the Panasonic PLC really straightforward um, all the markings are on the uh, terminals themselves and not to mention the fact that the RS-232 connection is point to point uh, whereas the RS-45 can be used in, to daisy chain multiple PLCs behind the uh, eTor device. Now the reason I guess you'd want to set this up this way is in case you might have um, a scenario where you need remote I.O. Um, you'll have a PLC that's Ethernet and uh, through that Ethernet cable it would be connecting to some remote I.O. or maybe even to uh, another PLC much like the Panasonic here maybe as a slave device. So the master PLC might be controlling the whole plant or the whole machine um, and we might have the multiple uh, Panasonic PLCs controlling certain sections of the machine or the plant um, thereby effectively you know, allowing control. Or on the other hand, um, it might just be reporting back up to SCADA or something like that. The illustration below shows that there's really uh, six steps to the uh, Modbus message coming from the PC initially as a TCP packet, running through the network, hitting the eTor, converting it to a Modbus RTU packet, and then the uh, slave device responding with the information. Now let's open up the Panasonic software and start there and configure that as a Modbus slave device. So using FPWIN Pro uh, 7, we'll go New Project, uh, we'll select the right PLC that we're using, which is an FPOR, and it's the C14. And we'll make a ladder, and we'll call this Modbus Slave Prep Project. Okay, first thing we need to do is set up that serial port. So PLC, system registers, serial ports, and COM1. Here we will change this to a uh, Modbus Slave. Let's just reduce that forward rate to, to a little bit more suitable. 8 bits odd, and the rest we don't need to worry about. So that's done. Let's go to the uh, program itself. Let's just pull in um, something very straightforward like a multiply and we will see what happens. So, easy. so DT0 will be 40,001. DT1 obviously and DT5 just to go up the chain a bit. So we'll adjust uh, 40,001 and 40,002 uh, it'll multiply and then we'll see the result on 40,006. Okay, so now if we go to the communication parameters for the PLC, here we're going to use RS232 USB to um, download the program to it, COM port 2. Okay, and I'll go online with the PLC, compile the program, and go online with it. SID. Okay, so that's ready to go. So now let's go and sort the eTor out and set that up. Uh, firstly, let's just have a look at our Ethernet configuration. So I'm plugged in via the Ethernet port directly into the eTor unit. And I've set my IP address on my PC as, as uh, .02. And um, we're going to set up the eTor as .05. Just a, just a note too, if you don't have a, a default gateway, sometimes Windows 7 or Windows 10, finds it hard to get out of the firewalls. So uh, if you have any problems trying to ping something, it's usually because you need to add a default gateway IP address, whatever's on the network. All right, so that's ready to go. Now I'm using my ethernet connection. So let's refresh that. Great, excellent, that's the device IP address. The password is Clemson. And as you can see, it's been pre-set up already. .05 for the IP address and gateway I've done the opposite to the PC which is .02 uh, web server port 80 this is how you access this page first thing let's go serial settings yes that's correct that's correct 
set gateway settings. We're setting it up as a server. Um, on the other hand, if we're setting up the Modbus um, PLC as a master Modbus, then it would be the client. But in this case, being a slave, it's a server sitting there waiting for a client to um, poll it. Security settings, if you want to save passwords, information, and apply, and that'll save the information. Okay, well that's it. That's the setup done. Now let's test it. Using a Modbus client over Ethernet, I'm uh, going to use this little piece of software and we're going to chat to the holding registers of the decimal and we're going to set this up on Ethernet so we're talking Modbus TCP IP address that is the Clemson um, IP address that is the TCP port we're using okie dokie and click connect so there we go so we've got our status happening I can see the eTOR unit uh, blinking crazy on the Ethernet port and using the PLC I'm going to change some values here we should see them come across straight away look at that so, and let's do that again on DT1, and there we go, there's the um, multiplication, uh, 5 times 6 ends up on 30. And there we have it guys, really dead simple uh, to set up, both on the Panasonic side and the eTOR side, wiring it together, and um, Bob's your uncle, you have an Ethernet enabled PLC.